Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch. This is part 37. Getting ready to repaint the hull and mix in the paint colour. First of all I need some paint, so I went up to Blackgate's Engineering to buy some. This is the range that Blackgate sell, and it's called Phoenix Precision Paints, and it really is good stuff. I obviously took my small video camera with me to Blackgate's to film the paint cupboard, but while I was there, I thought I would also take the opportunity to video some other things. Like, for instance, this beautifully made mechanical lubricator. Even the cutaway model they have of it is very well made. And for any viewers who have never seen inside a mechanical lubricator, this is what this particular model looks like. In my workshop, I have a Rylang oil can. I've had it for many years, and of course I bought it from Blackgate's. And as most viewers will realise, I buy quite a lot of things from Blackgate's. I don't have a financial connection with them, other than I pay them for the equipment that I buy. But they always have a good selection, and they're very helpful. Currently Blackgate's engineering carry a range of clerks and steam engine castings, and if anyone's looking for a model engineering project, these are well worth looking at. Right then, that's enough blatant advertising for my friends at Blackgate's. It's back to the build. What I'm doing at the moment is rubbing down the hull with some sandpaper. I'm only rubbing down the parts of the hull where the crack's been repaired. All of the filler and cellulose putty is fully set now, and it's taking no time at all to rub this down with the sandpaper, because if you watch the last video, you will see that I smoothed out the cellulose putty with some cellulose thinners as I was applying it. So there's really not that much rubbing down to do. This is quite coarse sandpaper. When I rub down the entire hull before I paint it properly, I'm going to be using some wet or dry paper. 400 grade I would think should be fine. But before I can continue, I do need the correct colour of paint. So I'm going to try and mix some to match what's already on the hull. This is the tin of Phoenix Precision Paints and it's called Buffer Beam Red because it's the colour that steam locomotives generally have the buffer beams painted in. So I'm going to try some of this on the hull. But there is one tiny problem. As I'm applying this paint to the hull, you may notice it's entirely the wrong colour. So I very quickly unpaint it. It would appear that buffer beam red is too bright, so what I'm going to try and do is mix some black paint with some buffer beam red. I'm obviously not going to tip the tin of black paint into the red paint to make it darker. First of all, I'm applying some of the red paint to this piece of plywood on the bench, and then some black paint to see how it comes out when I mix them together with the brush. And this is fairly horrible. It's far too dark, so I really don't need much black in there at all. I'm adding a little bit more red, to bring it back and in a moment I'm going to try it on the hull but currently I think it's still a little bit on the dark side so I'm adding some more of the buffer beam red it's most important to mix this thoroughly and the brush does a very good job of this on a piece of plywood once I had quite a good quantity of an approximate colour on the piece of plywood I took off a little bit and tried different mixers and again here is some more black going into the mix and I think it's a little bit dark this job does require quite a lot of patience and it's very much a case of trial and error. Time to try this mix on the hull and see what it looks like. And it's close, but it's still a little bit on the bright side. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this paint exactly like this on the hull. And I'm not too worried about that because provided it's near enough, it will be good. And over time it will darken anyway. The big problem I have with paint is as you apply it, it always looks brighter and tends to dry a little bit darker. But I'm not happy with this shade, so I'm unpainting it. Now I'm trying another slight variation of the mix on the palette, and it's much closer. This is very close indeed as far as I can see. Unless I've suddenly gone colour blind, that's a good match. The only problem now is, I have a palette with some paint on it, which is a very good match to this colour. But, I need a little bit more than what's on the palette so I have to mix this in tins to make quite a good quantity, because I'd like to give the hull about two coats of this paint, and I definitely do not want to run out halfway through a coat. Looking at the clip on screen though, I think I've got it as near as I need it to be. It's maybe a fraction brighter, but then it is new paint. The combination that I first tried was the buffer beam red, with a little bit of black in it, and that was not right. Then I added a little bit of humbrol red, and that was not right. So I added some of this. This is Precision Paints LMS Crimson Lake Gloss. And this is the colour in the old days that they used to paint LMS steam locomotives with. If I want to be really picky, I think it's just a tiny bit too dark. 
so I'm going to initially apply some of this to the hull itself and let it dry and see what it looks like. And while the paint on the hull is drying, I'm opening some tins so I can mix the paint to the correct colour. I have a pretty good idea of the ratio, and what I need before I can start is another tin to tip the quantities into. And as luck would have it, I have an empty tin. First of all, I'm putting quite a lot of the buffer beam red into this tin, because this is the main base colour. But of course I'm not tipping all of the buffer beam red into the mixing tin, because if I get the mix wrong, I may need to add some more. So I'm keeping some back, just in case I get it spectacularly wrong. It's very important to keep mixing this as you add the different colours. And the next colour to go into the mixing tin is a very small amount of Humbrol Gloss Red Enamel. This tin hasn't got much in it, so I'm going to empty it completely. I do have some more red on the shelf if I need it. So that's the Humbrol Red, and a little bit more Buffer Beam Red, because I think I was a bit heavy-handed with the Crimson. And that, of course, is why it's very important to hold some back and not use all of it in one go. And I'm still not using all of it, but there's a lot more gone into the mix. Time now to give it a thorough stir, followed by doing another test on part of the hull. Yes, this looks quite good, but I think a little bit more Humbrol Red would be a good idea. The reason for adding a little bit more of the Humbrol Red is I'm trying to compensate for the fact that the paint is wet, and therefore it looks brighter. So if I make it a tiny bit brighter than I need it, when all the paint's dried, it should be approximately the right colour. Even if this turns out not to be a perfect match for the original paint, I do like the shade of it. I would think that this will look really nice. Currently, of course, I'm not painting the entire hull. I'm just painting around the repaired area, and then I can stand back and get an overview of it. What I'm going to be doing once this paint's gone thoroughly hard after about a week is rub down the new paint and the old paint on the entire hull. Then I'm going to paint it properly, but of course I'm going to paint it one side at a time. It would definitely not be a good idea to paint the entire hull in one go, both sides, because I would have to lean across to do it, I would get drips and runs, and I would also get red paint all over my nice new t-shirt. And that's about it for the moment. I'm going to put the lid on the tin of paint for the time being. I have to leave this hull until all the paint has really gone hard, then I can continue working on it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.